All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to episode number 64 of my weekly Jump Game Review Series. I am your host, Chris Gogolin. Thank you for joining me tonight. We got a little bit to talk about. We got some good stuff going on here. Uh, not a lot going on in the old Jump Lobby right now. Everybody is either uh, traveling to the World Championships coming up this week or, uh, you know, getting themselves ready. Uh, we've seen quite a few alts on this week that we haven't seen before. Uh, I'm sure that's everybody trying to get last-minute playtesting games without giving too much away, although in a field of uh, 70 players, there's not a, uh, a whole lot of secrecy or uh, of uh, specific game planning, really, for people going on with that aspect of it. Um, and we are up to 70 players, uh, as just revealed earlier today. Uh, Last-minute uh, last minute update. Uh, North American Continentals champion Greg Gregory K. Shaw, Gregory E. Shaw, whatever it is, uh, will be attending last-minute plane ticket for Greg. He is going to Continental to, to, to the World Championships now, and uh, that'll add one more player. That puts them up to 70 players, which makes this the biggest World Championship that uh, I think the PC has ever had. Um, I don't think we've gotten over 70 players. We've had, you know, mid-60s, upper-60s quite a few times. But uh, if we have hit 70, it's certainly been a very long time since that's happened uh, that I can remember. So uh, congratulations to everyone attending the event uh, for being part of the largest world championship uh, in the PC recent history, we'll say. We'll say recent history just to, you know, so the fact checkers don't don't hit me too hard on that one. Um, but yeah, and the list of people going, uh, it's a pretty incredible list. Um, there are going to be a number of, of top players or recognizable names who are probably going to miss the cut. Um, you know, with 70 players, there's going to be some play-in games. You're going to have, I mean, we had 61 people at North American Continentals, and there were... Uh, 10 guys who were 6 and 2 or better. Uh, they were only doing a top 8 cut, so there were no play in games. So numbers 9 and 10 um, did not get a, a chance there um, and missed out. But uh, for the World Championships, they are doing that this year. There will be play in games, and I expect there to be at least three play-in games taking place. Uh, the fourth game is always tricky because you don't know if that's going to be the, where the, the bubble is for the 7-1s. and ones. Um, Because if, you're, if you would pair up against a 7-1 and one player, um, then you just automatically lose. Because 7-1 and one is a guaranteed advancement. So if you're like number 12 or number 13, you're, you're like double bubbling. So... But looking at this list of players, we got obviously Chris Menzel and Tomas Pop are going to be running the event. Uh, but you've got Matt Cruley, who's made uh, top eights at uh, North America, or, uh, uh, U.S. Nationals. Uh, Justin Cruley, who was in a playoff game at Worlds last year uh, to try and make top eight. Uh, Mike Kessling, perennial recognizable name, who's made... A few cuts. Hayes Hunter was just top four worlds last year. Emil Wallen, two-time world champion and Hall of Famer. Uh, Jan's made some top eight cuts. The guy who makes all your foils, Kevin, you know, looking down. Brian Fred, who's always making top eight cuts. Two-time and defending world championship. Uh, Bastian Winklehouse and Decipher Hall of Famer. Uh, Casey, who made top eight of worlds three years ago, is it now? Uh, when, when Tom Hayde won. That would have been three years ago. Uh... You know, some of the other Europeans, Stefan's a top European player. Moritz uh, was a strong European player for a while, hasn't played in too recently. We'll see how that is. Same, you know, Cedric. You got Joe Olson coming off a, a runner-up at Continent or North, yeah, North American Continentals. Tom Hayde, world champion. Uh, Brian Mischke was just there. He's been in the finals of the MPC a couple times. Uh, he was in top four of the uh, Continentals. Uh, Kieran just won the uh, Hungarian Open. So, uh, we don't know if Toby's going to be there. Okay, so maybe, maybe they're back down to 69 because they're thinking he may not make it. Okay. That's what it was earlier. Um, 
you've got the infamous Rasmus, who uh, may some of you may have seen his uh, his video of him playing uh, the Gungan deck while drinking that uh, Menzel shared. Uh, but plenty of other uh, Eric was at Worlds uh, last year. Came over from uh, to America to participate in that. Uh, Paul's made some top eight cuts at European Championships. Kyle's previous uh, two-time runner-up at the world finalist. Uh, DDM always has some creative stuff. Uh, Christian, who can't decide where he's from. He lives in New York slash North Jersey, but only attends events in Europe, uh, apparently. Doesn't come to any of our U.S. events. I guess he just doesn't like us very much. <laughs> uh, Tom Kelly, uh, world runner-up finalist last year and two-time MPC champion. Pretty much in, almost always in the top eight somewhere. You got Steve Baroni, who's two-time MPC champion and perennial top eight kind of guy. Uh, Justin Desai, Hall of Famer and two-time world champion. Angelo, Hall of Famer and former world champion. Um and now we're adding Greg, North American Continental Champion, to that list. That's like 15 guys, 20 people whose names I just rattled off who easily could all make uh, the top cut. And it's only going to be eight of them. So this is certainly going to be uh, a bloodbath, a bit of a murderer's row for people to try and get through. And uh, I think a lot of it's going to come down to the early tiebreakers. You know, the people you play in games two, three, and four are the ones that you're going to need to go at least four and four, if not five and three, to help boost your strength of schedule to uh, to get you up uh, into that top part. You know, if you're if you're two and zero oh in game three, you're getting pared down against somebody who's one and one, who that's the only game they win all day, and they go you know one and five and drop or something like that. Um, you know, that's gonna kind of you're gonna be sitting at the floor for strength of schedule on that, and that's gonna end up hurting you. Tell me why Worlds this year doesn't end in an Angelo Shaw final. That would be pretty epic. Uh, that would be a throwback to the 2002 World Championships when Angelo won his world title uh, coming over to America and Virginia Beach, playing against a very young upstart youth, we'll call him at that time, uh, Craig Shaw, um, who had a minor deck list error. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a force field, force lightning thing. He, uh, he wrote one of them down twice on his list, and actually wanted one of each. Uh, I think it was. I think he had to play with two force fields and no force lightning. He wrote field and had to play lightning. Yeah. Oh, he wrote field. Yeah. So he didn't have, and he had a force lightning in his deck. So he had he had to switch that at some point when they deck checked him. Uh, and correct that, and did not have a Force Lightning available to him, which I believe did make a, a bit of a difference there. No Lightning to kill the Arcona. Thank you, Bill, for, for remembering that, because that sounds very familiar now that you say it, and uh, just the fact that anybody was using an Arcona, you know, it's already telling you what the heck kind of shenanigans was going on back then. Um, but, yeah, that would... That would certainly be, I mean, there's a number of great matchups that, you know, we'd like to see, but that's that's certainly an epic one. Uh, could Baroni pick up his first world championship going all the way across the pond to do it? Uh, same thing with Tom. Um, you know, could one of the other Euros step up? Could Justin Branch, you know, who's been playing, I, don't know, I think I skipped over him before, I apologize, Justin. Uh, Justin, who, you know, was in the OCS top four and... Um, you know, has been right there making the cuts of a lot of other events. Could this be Justin's chance to uh, to really step up and take his game to that next level and, you know, add a, a bigger trophy to his display case? Um, so there's uh, certainly a lot of interesting ways this could all play out. Uh, we will have, or attempt to have, live commentary being done through the events. Uh, we believe we have the Wi-Fi issue on site. Uh, being handled. Uh, you'll have Queso Sauce. Did an interview with Justin Branch for Wednesday's episode of Hollow Theater. Stay tuned for that. Well, there you go. We'll make sure to plug that at the end of the show. Uh, please remind me if I don't remember to do it, Queso, uh, for the Hollow Theater show this week. Uh, but Queso is, he's taking the days off work this weekend. He will be staying up 
or sleeping and then staying up all night to try and do live commentary for the event. And I'm sure he'll have a uh, rotating platoon of co-hosts. I think Tartag said he was going to swap in for a couple games. And I'm sure there may be a few other players who are not attending the tournament uh, that might be interested in, uh, in getting on commentary for a little bit with him for that. Or maybe he'll just do it all by himself because uh, he's awesome like that because that's Queso. Haven't figured out his sleeping plans yet. Send Red Bulls. Okay. We can do that. Actually, I'll do yourself a favor. Go pick up a case of Red Bull and then just send me the receipt. And we'll take care of that for you, Queso. But, uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, so even at 69 players, that's still uh, pretty amazing. And maybe they'll, maybe somebody last minute will show up. Uh, and one of these other Europeans will bring a friend or one of their kids or something. Or yeah, crypto will make a miraculous appearance out of nowhere, even though he's been telling everybody he's not coming. So either way, it's going to be an awesome. Or maybe TV will just you know get his get figure out his uh, girlfriend, children watching situation, and uh, and be able to make it out and be number 70. So um, so that's the big thing going on right now with that. Obviously, L World Championships kind of take precedence over everything else. But uh, I did want to also mention the Player of the Year because I did hint at this a little bit last week when I was talking about a different event. Oh, see, there you go. Uh, Bill's going to jump in and do a little commentary with you in the early morning. That should, uh, yeah, help alleviate some of that pressure. Um, but player of the year currently sitting at the top of the leaderboard is Joe Olson with that, uh, top four performance. I'm sorry, final uh, top two performance at Continentals plus, uh, picking up some other events points along the way, sitting there at 24 points currently, um, OCS playoffs and uh, Endor Grand Prix, I'm sure, and uh, yeah, some other points and stuff like that. So Joe's at the top of the leaderboard right now, and then there's a nice little log jam here for second place between uh, the OCS champ, the MPC champ, and the uh, Continentals champ. And then you've got all the other guys who've uh, picked up some points for their finishes in the the top, and then you get to the top European players in Justin and Bastion and whatnot. So, last week, I hinted, I mentioned something called the the Outrider Cup event. I have some more details for you. I don't have an official uh, thing yet. been a little busy trying to get everything prepared and shipped for Worlds, so I haven't had time to draft up the official uh, release and whatnot for that. But, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to have my notes over here on the side so I can see what's going on. All right, so here's the Outrider Cup tournament. It will take place in December and January. It'll be played on Jemp, where there is a lull because we expect the OCS playoffs to run through October and November. Maybe the finals might end up tying, being in December, depending on how that plays out. But ideally, we'd like to do the draft uh, the Wednesday after Worlds. So what's that, the 26th? Um, and then games will begin in October and November and run through November, and we should uh, pare all that down and have our OCS champion, uh, you know, roughly the end of November. So that gives us a little lull for two months, and what better way to break up that lull than to have a little North America European comp friendly competition, which we call the Outrider Cup. Teams will consist of six players. I need to minimize this. All right, so your teams will consist of six players. The five players from each team are based on their player of the year points, with the person with the most points being the team captain. So currently right now, the team would look like Joe Olson, Justin Desai, Chris Kelly, Greg Shaw, Brian Mischke. I haven't figured out how to do tiebreakers yet for people with the same points. I'll have to work on that. Probably go back and look at any, see if they played at any of the same events and or the most recent event that they played at and who finished higher. Probably makes the most sense for that. Um, so we got, so it would be those five players, and the team captain gets to select the sixth participant to join the team. Also, if anybody decides they don't want to participate, the team captain would find alternative replacements for them. 
So you'd have Joe, Justin, Chris, Greg, and Brian, plus one more. And Team Europe would be Justin Branch as your team captain with Bastian, Emil, Angelo, and either Kuhn or Tom. I had to figure out the tiebreaker for that one, one of those two. Uh, so it'd be pretty, pretty impressive teams there. Um, how it works is, so you've got six players on each team, and the team captain, there's two rounds, the team captain will assign all of their players uh, to play against someone of the other team. They, they pick the matchups. So round one, your team captain, Joe, would say, I'm going to play this guy, Justin's going to play that person, so on and so forth, and pair everybody up. And then in the other round, uh, Justin would be the team captain. He would get to pick, and he would assign all his players up. You play a match, you win the match, you get a point. Team with the most points wins. If it's a tie at the end of that, the team captains play for the tiebreaker for the title. Uh, that's the tiebreaker for that. Um, so if both teams tie the exact number of points, say it's 6-6, six, because six, everybody, each team wins three games or whatever like that, then the team captains settle the, the tiebreaker in, in an epic match there. Now, just to add another wrinkle, just to add another little wrinkle, uh, during the round, or during round one, whichever team captain assigns, the, you know, gets to pick, so there'll be a coin toss or something like that, and uh, you'd have the out. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not a coin toss. The player with the higher points gets to pick whether they want to assign the matchups in round one or round two. Uh, so right now it would be Joe, and Joe would get the decision. Does he want to assign his team players in round one or round two? And just to make sure that there is deck diversity and not everybody's playing the same stuff, only one person on each team is allowed to use the same uh, deck starting location slash objective. So in round one, these five guys, plus whoever their fifth is, so Joe wants to play, so they're, all their dark side games, Joe could play Black Sun, Justin could play this, Chris could play Rops, uh, Greg could play, you know, Map or whatever, Brian could play something else, he's got to find a fifth deck. Um, and that'll be up to the team captain to coordinate who's going to use what, who, who, you know, who's most comfortable with what decks, who's going to use what deck in that round, because you can only, there can be only one. Um, going to be a little harder for Dark Side right now to, uh, to come up with that fifth and sixth deck. Um, you know, somebody's got to have Court, somebody's got to have to use, I mean, you can do Court and Black Sun and MCOS, and then that's three Scum-style decks um, if you wanted to, but yeah, there can only be one object. So you, you can't have five people playing Throne Room and, you know, five map decks, and there's our team. It's like, no, you gotta you got to mix it up a little bit, and that certainly makes things more interesting then. And uh, then you kind of get into the, uh, you know, the matchups a little bit there too. So let's see what we got here. How do have have here? Uh, tiebreaker should be Sabic. <laughs> How it works, US, Team USA dominates the European participants? No. Cup idea sounds great. Was there a thread on this? I missed it. No, I haven't posted a thread yet. Uh, yeah, this was an exclusive, Bill. Um, yeah, this was a, a Chris Goglin brainchild. Um, always kind of wanted to do something team, you know, friendly competition. And uh, now that Jemp has really taken off, there seems to be a very easy way to do it. So uh, there will be an official uh, announcement uh, once I get all the details finalized and actually have time to type up something that looks really pretty uh, and formal and has all the little kinks worked or most of the little kinks worked out because I know you guys will find some stuff that I missed and uh, yeah and then hopefully it'd be awesome to get a little trophy with like the Outrider sitting on top um, like a fantasy football trophy that we could like put the names of like the winning players on the team on like a little plate each year um, I don't know about that but we'll see if we can find something like that oh and just to make things more interesting uh, the members of the winning team get a $50 travel voucher to attend a future major event and the team captain since he's doing a little bit more work he gets a $75 travel voucher so uh, I think all in all sounds like a pretty fun event hopefully the top players uh, are interested in participating in it and hopefully it uh, you know, helps reward players a little bit for their player of the year 
uh, results because currently uh, we haven't done. We you know we announced who Player of the Year is, and there's like a you know a running little list of the awards and whatnot. But it hasn't actually had its own little prize yet, and I feel like this kind of ties the two things in together. It kind of gives you something else to aim for if you're like, oh, I've only got eight points. Like, I'm never going to catch Joe. He's got 24. It's like, but maybe I can catch Mishki. You know, maybe if I just finish better than him and I make a top eight cut and he doesn't, and or maybe I'll go to that regional and pick up those extra two or three points uh, at that regional tournament that had eight or ten players. And, you know, maybe somewhere down the road that might uh, make a difference. So... I think it certainly uh, keeps things more active throughout the year, knowing that there's a little bit something else to play for other than just bragging rights for the guy who wins. Because 99% of the time, it's usually the guy who wins Worlds. Because at 2.5 points and at 60-plus people, um, I think that's like 20 points to the world champion. So uh, if you have any points at all throughout the year, like any of these guys who are down here, uh, could easily just leapfrog right up to the top just by just by winning Worlds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just go do that, and then you win. Um, it's that simple. So that is the Outrider Cup. We will try and get a official formal announcement uh, released, hopefully, uh, after Worlds. We've got a little time to that. Uh, when we get to the OCS draft, get that out of the way, and then we'll talk about uh, getting this information released with the teams, and then hopefully the uh, members of the team are interested in uh, participating. And of course, if you're not, then the team captain just gets to pick one extra replacement. So, and uh, it's up to the team captain how they want to uh, decide whether they want to just go down the list and pick the next qualified player, or if they, you know, have somebody in mind that they're like, hey, you know, uh, this guy's really good. I think it'd be a good addition to our team. But he wants to get the team's input and have everybody else vote for somebody. That's entirely up to them how they choose uh, the extra player for their team. So let's pop back over to Jemp, see if there's anything going on here. We've got one random game, Legend against Ral Ops between Pipe and Ryder. I think we are going to skip that one for now. Oh, and uh, I will just go back and recap the list real quick. Uh, for the OCS draft, which is coming up here, uh, live draft. There we go. So we've got our top 16 players, and our first two are European players. I believe they'll be submitting their picks electronically, given the time of the show, because it'll be 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when uh, Hall Theater normally does their show. <laughs> you have one point. You're in this race. Uh, you could be. You very well could be, Bill. Hey, if Greg wins Worlds, that would ma that might make him the team captain. He could pick whoever he wants for that sixth spot. How's he not going to pick his good buddy Bill, right? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we have our two Europeans at the top. They'll probably be emailing over their picks. Well, Silver Glenn, his pick, and assuming he doesn't pick Bastion, which seems pretty likely, but you never know. Uh, he could just do it just to screw with Bastion, get in his head a little bit. Um, then Bastion will probably also email his picks over, and then we'll try and get as many of these of these players, uh, at least in the the Twitch chat, to uh, you know to throw out their picks or who they want to get matched up against. Then we can uh, discuss that a little bit as it's going on. Um, Queso will be doing that along with uh, with Tartag on their Hollow Theater show, the Wednesday following the World Championships. Um, I know. Uh, since some people, a lot of people will still be traveling that Monday and things like that, uh, trying to do it during my Monday show uh, just didn't seem to make the most sense logistically. So uh, I will I will pass over that responsibility to to Jerry. He can handle that and take care of that. Um, Jerry, for the people emailing their picks, I think it's probably best if they just send them to you guys. I tried to get Justin's pick when I interviewed him, but he wasn't giving it up. Oh. Okay, um, but yeah, if anybody has to email their picks, if they can't participate, probably best to just send it to you because I know you have your dedicated show address. Do you want to put that in the chat and then I'll read it out and then... Uh, let me go find it. Okay. So that, and then once we get the matchups and the pairings, 
then uh, as we'll do another thread like we did last year, which for those of you who don't remember what we did last year, let's go back and show you. So what we did last year, online championship series, do, do, do. schedule of results and playoff matchups. We did this nice little separate thread. And we had our top 16. Oh, God. This did not translate well with the formatting change. Okay. Oh, because it's got the links, and it's trying to go directly to Twitch for all of them. Because <laughs> I had all the Twitch links for all the different matchups and games. So it, uh, yeah, certainly screwed all those up. Um, but yeah, we had the date and time of the matchups so people could watch. We had a commentary. Most of it was done by me. Jerry did a handful of games as well. SWCCG Holo Theater at gmail.com. And it's spelled the formal British way with the R E, not the E R, the way like we sloppy Americans do it. So yeah, so we'll, I'll put that in the, you know what, let me just do that right now while I'm here. But yeah, so we had all the spoiler tags and everything here with all the results of the matchups and the links to the games. If people were playing at weird times, we had them send us replay links. And then we did, I watched, like we do with my show now, we watched a replay link and commentated on the game and the action that was happening and made sure that was posted. That way all the players had all the same information and nobody could like hide their match and play in the secret. Um... All of it was streamed, all of it was recorded, and then they were all moved over to the YouTube channel um, for posterity. So you can go back and watch all of last year's 2018 uh, OCS games. But that's what we'll do again. We'll get a separate thread, we'll put the dates and times as players pick their time. So please pick your time. You know, Don't just show up and be like, hey, do you want to play our game now? Because um, that kind of screws things up. It would be great if you guys could announce, you know, coordinate a time. Like, hey, do you want to play Thursday at 7 p.m.? This is the time you're allowed to, to, to plan your games. Um, it's it's actually acceptable for the playoffs for the OCS to uh, to pick your times and uh, and when you want to play. It's the only time you're allowed to do that. So you might as well take advantage of it. But that's how that will all work. And then, uh, again, we'll figure out a schedule for who's available and who's interested in, uh, in streaming that particular matchup. And we'll get those games streamed and commentated on as well so just like on the star wars card yep holo theater so we should all play hunt town got it oh well, let's watch the first turn of this game see what what taco bell has uh, has picked up from Participating in our in our channel and our show over these years, never mind. There's already a Sleen. Uh, <laughs> you knew Baba Duke wasn't going to play anything that was going to be just stand up conventional. Uh, but there's he pulled the Swamp and dropped a Sleen. So he certainly has my interest peaked. For those of you who have never seen these cards before. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Once during your deploy phases, may deploy one creature here from reserve deck. So you use the swamp. Well, the objective gets you the diamond sites. You download a site or non unique imperial. And then you play the Sleen, who temporarily cancels a light side icon present. I remember back in the day, we used to play this wrong all the time. We used to think he ate one icon like each turn. So I'd be like, oh, he cancels this icon, and then you know, next turn he cancels another one, and we were, they were canceling Yoda's icon at some point. And uh, yeah, nobody understood creature rules back then. Most of us don't understand them now. Uh, Selene Rops is OP. Yeah, it's broken. So let's start a competitive balance thread for it. Um, but I guess the the uh oh first first turn Corrin Horn. Um, the tricky part with the Sleen Rops would be you pull the other sites, you'd move the Sleens over, 
and you'd basically have three 1-0 locations, which I guess become 2-0 locations because of the route to your objective. Light side wouldn't be able to deploy there. Dark side would just drop three random guys to three non-battleground sites, uh, flip the objective, and then just go fight everywhere else without really having to worry about being flipped back. But the downside to that, of course, is light side can drop some spies, which they do have a handful of. Um, no idea. Certainly has a plethora of them. Uh, most of their deck is spies, so this would be a terrible matchup against that deck. But most light side decks run at least Corn Horn and Jin or so. Maybe not. Most of them run both. Occasionally, uh, you might only get one or the other, but for the most part, it's usually the two of them. Uh, then a handful of decks will run Cassian. Uh, Occasionally you'll see somebody like uh, Jar Jar pop up or uh, Lieutenant Blount for ISB or whatever. <clears throat> Didn't quite go exactly as planned. Corn Horn going down, getting burned by a three. He popped Imperial Decree, which I guess is a step in the right direction. And Piet's off the table, and that cuts his activation a little bit as well from the extra one from the uh, established control. But he's going to need to have more than that. Otherwise, his only way to do it is going to be to deploy guy, or deploy the Tandiv here and then shuttle people down. It's the other way to work around it. Uh, or deploy to a ship, move over, and then land or shuttle people down, depending on what ships he has available. Spy Leia, yeah. Well, R2 doesn't... Oh, R2V, because he adds... He would add the extra icon, yeah. Uh, he has to be with the scump link to do to add the icon. I forget how exactly how he reads. And I don't think any of these sites have scump links, so R2D2 may not work. Leia would, though. Leia Organa, which uh, some more decks are start have been playing. Usually you'll see her in, like, No Idea and Diplo, um, mostly. Um, General Leia is usually the more popular, and then occasionally you get that Leia Rebel Princess who just kind of hoses Court and Black Sun decks a little bit. The Spaceport ones have Scomp links? I don't know off the top of my head. Let's go look. Hey, look, it's a second Sleen. Now, don't they eat each other? Oh, no, because they're packed guys. They've got this little icon that makes them pack hunters, so they work together and they don't attack each other. I know that's part of the creature rules, that if you have creature two creatures at the same site, they like immediately attack each other. Uh, yes, the spaceport site does appear to have a scomp link, so R2 would work there. Unless there's two sleens, because then R2 would add one and the second sleen would then cancel it. Uh, but I'm going to guess he's going to put one sleen at each site. Hassan is going back to the docking bay, get that extra icon back, and then he'll uh, pull some shuttles. Usually it's Emperor Shuttle and Vader Shuttle. I guess you could pull Kylo Shuttle too if you really wanted to, but um, that typically doesn't see play in this uh, in Rollops because they're always wanting to run Domination, and uh, Kylo Shuttle would cancel that, but there are three shuttles he could pull. Do a pull chain. Piet for Dasan. Dasan for Kylo shuttle. The shuttle to get Kylo. <laughs> and just have some crazy pull chain. Right? See, where's DDM watching this game right now? DDM, I'm finally featuring some creatures on the show. And you're not here. He's already talking about uh, yeah, so I can't print my deck lists off Jemp because I play strange cards like creatures that aren't in Jemp. So how do I submit my deck list electronically? It's like you just type up your deck list into an email and just email it over. 
The downside to this particular version of Sleens is that, obviously, with them canceling the icons, that well, Darkseid can't force drain anywhere. <laughs> so it's a slower setup, and they're not doing any draining or any damage. At some point in time, they could kill their Sleens to give the icons back so they could drain. But then that also gives Lightside the ability to uh, come, at, come at them again. Bill's going to get his own damage rolling, get his objective flipped, try and retrieve a card, or probably try and retrieve Corn Horn. Oh, he's going to just retrieve the interrupt. Doesn't want to put Corn Horn out of play. See if his opponent will just let that go through rather than stack a card. Probably will let that go through. Just give him a free card back. Usually if you're trying to retrieve something that's like not like a, a key interrupt, if it's a non-character card, most of the time your opponent will just be like, fine, go ahead, have it. Um, you know, if it's a character, they're like, yeah, hey, I don't, maybe you have two of them, maybe you don't. Either way, I don't want you getting that same guy back. Just, just put him out of play. I don't want to have to kill him again. A lot of times you'll use one even if it's just a random card. Yeah, it is a card from hand too, so that also does sometimes limit your choices. If you have cards in your hand, like if you had like an according to my design in his hand that he obviously serves no purpose, you could easily stack that. Uh, if he's got a bunch of good cards in his hand, that makes it a little bit more of a difficult decision. But yeah, that's certainly a, a reasonable course of action. He's got some undercover spies in this deck, too, to really just ignore everything for, like, five turns <laughs> while he slowly sets up. Joe, I think you would agree, though, that majority of the time you probably wouldn't stack a card to stop him from getting his head into the medical for I get back. That one, you'd probably just, just let him have that one. I mean, obviously, you'd have secret plans out to make him pay for it, but you're probably not going to lose a card from hand to let him get back a Destiny 3 interrupt. Even though it does add one to a battle Destiny. All right, so he gets the shuttle, and then we'll probably see him. He'll pull a third site, and then he'll do the Sleen shuffle, assuming he's got one more Sleen, whether it's in his hand or reserve deck. I'm assuming he's running four or five of these guys. And then we'll see if he also flips. Now, the uh, the creatures do attack. They are Their ferocity is a destiny minus three, which then gets compared to the character's power that they're eating and then they could technically kill a character. So, like, Dasan over here is just... Power 1. So if you were to draw a 5, Dasleen would eat Commander Dasan. He deploys the docking bay between the two sites. That'll save him a little bit of shuffling. So then he pulls the Sleen and then just moves it over. Or maybe he's got one in hand. Looks like he's going for the flip. And again, he'll need to make sure he's got guys that at least have a decent amount of power. Maybe that'll be the thing. Maybe he'll drop a guy here, drop a guy here, flip, and then move everybody to the docking bay. And then just kind of leave these guys blocking down these two sites and force them to have spies to come and flip him back while he holds on to his one battleground with a biker scout trooper and a speeder bike. Here's more fun cards. Let's read them and see what they do. So the speeder bike can have a pilot and a passenger. 
may move as a react when piloted. The vehicle and scouts aboard are immune to attrition less than four. The pilot's power equals zero, and the characters aboard may jump off if the vehicle is lost. So put down the Inquisitors, then that f does that. Floats his objective because he's got three guys out now. Gets a card. And the this dude adds three to power of any speeder bike he pilots. He's forfeit plus two while aboard a speeder bike, so makes him a one four. Once during each of your deploy phases, he can get a speeder bike out of the reserve deck. This one came from hand, though. But they don't like draw if unable to otherwise or anything. I thought there was a card that maybe matched up for them to do that. Like Aratech or something. Maybe just let that just lets them match up. Yoshi subscribed. Thank you very much for renewing your subscription. Month number nine. I just had to uh, reach out to the advocate and let him know that we're going to start needing some of the... Uh, the Sleen is attacking the Grand Inquisitor. This could also come into play later, making sure you have enough destiny to draw for stuff. So during the battle phase, the creature has to randomly attack one character that's at its location. You have to draw destiny for its ferocity. Any characters you have that have... Uh, <laughs> any characters you have with ability 4 or greater can also draw destiny to add to their power to help keep them help keep them alive from getting eaten uh, because of the text on the prefix site here Imperial Leader, Imperials at same, and related sites are power and forfeit plus one. So Ozzel was a four. So you need an eight minus three to get the five. So unless he's got some blaster rifles or something in there, uh, that's not even going to do it. This guy gets on the bike. Tassan moves over. Now that still isn't four ability. He still only has three ability there. There he goes. Tassan gets on as a passenger. And the Sleen moves over here to cancel this particular icon. Uh, I believe characters on vehicles are also protected from creature attacks. Even open vehicles. That's why guys on like the Java Sail Barge don't get eaten by the Sarlacc. I think that's part of the rules, too. Uh, but anywho, yes, I did get have to reach out to Advocate that we're going to be getting people getting closer to that 12-month uh, Twitch subscription streaks in the not-too-distant future. And I'm sure many of them would be very excited to get their hands on their foil map objective, light si both sides, front and back, to have a foil version of that objective. And that is the reward for the 12 months of uh, subscribing. In that 12-month streak, it's uh, light and dark, uh, light uh, front and dark, ugh, front and back of the map objective. I won't say light and dark objectives, but no, there's only one objective. And it will probably be the most popular one played at the World Championships. There will be a couple different versions and variants of it between the Blasters, the Alert, My Star Destroyer, or just you know some other uh, starting effect type platform for it. Rops is flipped now. Nobody pulled Battle Order, so he's draining for free. He's got a Force Loss of 1. That's going to move... The Prophecy over, and now because there's a Skywalker there, the Prophecy will stay. So this will be a drain of two. Meanwhile, uh, yep, here comes the Unitoth. At each opponent's diamond site, your Rebels are each deploy minus two, and your Force Generation is plus one. Now the objective says that uh, your Spaceport sites, I think it is... 
Yeah, spaceport sites are immune to he hasn't come back yet and UNITA. But these other sites that are not spaceport sites, all the broken ones basically, they are not immune to it. So all of his guys deployed minus one there. So Hera. Hera came down. Oh, I'm sorry, they deploy minus two. So Hera came down for two. Lando came down for three. And I'm sure he's got somebody he's going to drop a card from hand now. I guess he was planning on forfeiting Lando. Well, he does uh, battle for free. He's flipped back now that the... Uh... Oh, he canceled the barrier with a bit shuffle. I missed that. I was, I was yapping. Um, I was like, why didn't he pull the shield to make him lose two for it? But Nope. So you got enough ability here. You've got Lando adding a battle destiny, and you've got Hera adding one with an Imperial... So this is uh, three battle destiny here. Uh, at the very least, he's going to stack a card, and I feel the conflict. I guess we're going to find out if he's got any, if he wants to react, because this can react. May move as react. He could bring this over. <coughs> oh, I think he's just going to go get the gick. <laughs> adds to his for each route to your location his Imperials occupy, so he is adding three to his total battle destiny. So if, if he could draw a five here, that'd be an eight, and that would forfeit both guys. Probably not running a lot of fives in this deck, probably running a lot of fours. But hey, you never know. And he's probably going to need that kick there. So we're looking at 24, presumably to about 10. 11, 12, maybe with the adding. Wow! That's a great time to blind draw an Emperor. Oh, talk about a kick in the nuts. Now, it's a 9 which gets him to 15. He's still down by 9. This guy covers 7, so he could just peel the Grand Inquisitor and 2. But he's also going to clear both of these guys, which I'm sure is not what uh, Taco Bill was hoping for. Well, at least you spent 3 less force. Yeah, it's cost you 2 less to put the guys down and 1 less to keep upkeep on Lando. And hey, for half a second, you control a route to your location. He could just forfeit guys the opposite way if he wanted to. He could just lose, because he's got to lose two force as well. He could lose a force. Oh, but by killing the Grand Inquisitor, he does flip his objective back to the uh, retrieval side. Oh, the Inquisitor was actually forfeit eight, because it's Ozzel at the other site. So he's only losing one card. That's a heck of a time to blind draw a six. Let's see who he picks. This is always the interesting thing, too. You have to pay the force with, with secret plans, and then your opponent gets the option to cancel it. I kind of thought he was going to pick Hera, but I didn't want to say it, because I think Bill's still hanging out in the chat. Yep, forfeit plus one from the prefix office. Yep. chooses not to stack, he's going to give him Hera. He either really likes his hand, or uh, does not look at Hera as a threat. Yep. We're just going to watch this game. This will be our game of the week. It's already almost 8 o'clock, so I don't want to start another game review. And uh, We haven't seen creatures and stuff in a while, so uh, this is certainly something new to, uh, to feature. I'm sure this version of Rops has been popping around the jump boards for a little while, but uh, hey, you know it's a new, it's a it's a different take on an existing platform, and uh, we'll give it uh, a f some some 
focus here on the weekly show. So now we're going to have to see what Baba Duke can muster in terms of offense. Because right now he's he's done what he needed to. He's flipped his objective. He's played very defensively with the Sleens. Now he's got to find ways to do some damage of his own. Grand Admiral Thrawn V aboard an Emperor's shuttle. with an emperor aboard as a passenger. So that's five power, two battle destiny, completely immune to attrition. You've got Thrawn, so you could Imperial Command to add one or limit them to one. But his other text basically revolves around Admiral's orders and stuff. Excuse me. And then he's going to put Janus back to the swamp to give him his battleground site and battleground system. And he does still have the kick because he didn't need to play it because he drew so well previously. Bill's going to pop out of chat. Good luck forecasting what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I can't begin to imagine what uh, how this game's going to play out, but... Bill's going to play a leadership of his own, which is going to get grabbed. He's going to grab Leia. Be interesting to see if... Uh, yeah, no, I also dead. Um, if he's got any more spies left available, he just drew a bunch of cards, so he could have, uh, you know, Jin, Jar Jar... didn't retrieve corn yet. Does certainly probably wants to wait for his opponent's hand to get a bit smaller before trying something like corn, which uh, is likely to draw out uh, a card stack. Or just do it the old-fashioned way, by deploying Leia, battling, and you know she retrieves one for doing that, or other resistance characters. Gets to peek at one card because he occupies one battleground. Uh, he does pull the battle order shield now, so he will have to pay for this drain of two, which still seems pretty reasonable. Uh, he's certainly ahead on life force counts right now. He's got, what, 30 down plus 12 in hand, so he's at 42, and his opponent is at 30 because he's got a lot of cards on the table. So he's ahead by 12. They're both conceptually doing drains of one and one versus a drain of two. So, and then uh, Bill has the option to either retrieve a card or his opponent loses one extra force. So he would also be winning out uh, that way in terms of card advantage, either causing an extra force loss or uh, retrieving an extra card to offset the damage. So certainly would have to rely on Baba Duke to do something to, uh, to change things up. And we're going to get Leia and Rey. If he has any Rebels, they can come down really cheap, like an EPP Obi or something would be pretty spectacular right about now. A little overkill, but if you're the one, make sure he plays that Gick and you get to keep a character there. That would be the way to go. But no. Oh, he's got to pay extra to battle at the Swamp. I forgot about that. 
Uh, to initiate battle here, you must use plus three force. It doesn't have enough force to deploy anything else. That's one of the benefits of these stupid diamond sites. They all have really ridiculous game techs on them. Um, you know, the jungle makes everybody immune to attrition. I'm sorry, the forest makes everyone immune to attrition. The jungle makes, like, your battle destiny draws minus two. And then the swamp, uh, they have to pay plus three to initiate battle. Uh, I always forget about that text because we haven't seen the swamp in a while. So it cost him four to battle. If he was on the zero side of his objective, which is what he was the first turn, uh, you initiate battles for free. So free is unmodifiable, so that's why it didn't cost him that much the first time when he battled. He draws the four, but this is only plus two now, so that's only a six. And he does have the option to exchange a card, because it's Rowl Ops, and that's just silly. And he's going to lose the Biker Scout Trooper. And that's it. He's going to leave Ray in front of those guys. I wasn't sure if he was going to move Ray or not. I'm assuming he probably wants to leave the one force in case First Strike or something shows up with, uh, you know, Vader and a handful of guys. He still has the force available for the Hoojiks. So Ray doesn't completely get her butt whipped. We did see him draw an EPP Vader for Battle Destiny earlier. If he's tracking around to it with Janice's text, he could get that Vader into hand pretty easily. Drops a binder. Dasan gets into the pilot seat. And Elsic comes on as a passenger. Elsic doesn't add more. Elsic adds three to any speed or bike he pilots. Dasan only adds two. You could have one extra power if they were in different seats. But now you can't flip them because there's no capacity to move them between. This is the guy who soaks up when he's forfeited as your other biker scout. He covers all attrition and battle damage. I'm curious that he just threw the binder out there by itself. I don't know if he's going to shuttle Ozzel up. He'd still get the plus one by doing it that way, because you just have to be at route to your locations. Oops. Then he loses the bonus from having the uh, the leader at the street. All right, so now he's getting plus three again by putting Tarkin back down. This will definitely clear Ray. And Ray's going to draw the bottom card before she leaves the table and hope it's something better. Four, five, six, seven. Fifteen. Ray covers seven, gets to eleven. She adds one to her destiny draw. So, yep, she'll cover. 
And the six is pretty good because oh nope, Ozel. Never mind. I was gonna say the six to make sure he has to lose two characters, but nope. Uh, the prefect's office adding plus one to four fits. Commander Dasan cover six. Elsic also cover six. They're both plus two from Imperial Arrest Order and plus one from the Prefect's Office. <laughs> I agree, Taco Bell. Rops is dumb. Now you'll notice here, Tarkin doesn't draw, because Tarkin only draws one battle destiny, if not able to otherwise. Uh, has no effect on creature destiny. Creature attacks are separate from battles and uh, behave differently. Oh, he killed his own Sleen with Tarkin. And this particular Selene is going to attack Ozel. In order to beat a creature, you have to be better than its power and defense value. Which for these guys isn't too hard. Ferocity and defense value. Baba Duke is down to f just five cards in hand now. So it certainly seems a little more likely now that would, uh, if Taco Bell was going to try and retrieve a better card, like a Ray or Leia or somebody, uh, him having a smaller hand size makes that seem a little bit more likely. Hey, there's that other spy. Now the speeder bike could react over. This, this doesn't have to have any but it just moves as a react when you've got a pilot on it, so. Oh, but he's going to drop Hera and stuff over there, so he's going to battle over here first. And then possibly battle over here and, and kill Ozzel. Or... Yeah, that would be the way to do it, because if he battles here, Janice can get on and they can move away as a react and then kind of overpower her. He's attacking the Sleen. Attack the Sleen first. Get rid of the Sleen, get them all off the board, and then you kind of have free reign. That'll be a zero. And the Sleen is defeated. Oh, he is going to attack Ozel. That could be problematic. He could just give up the swamp. Oh, he can't react. 
Jin doesn't stop anybody from reacting. Oh, because L6's a passenger. He never moved him back to the pilot seat. If you guys are still watching... I'll just text Bill. Apparently I broke my internet by sending a text message. I'll have to reload. Yes, casual rent still around, still kicking, and moving into the 21st century with the both the live version of the game, still played by cards, and a digital platform now. So thanks for stopping by and checking us out. Nope, it won't let him react because the speeder bike has to be piloted to move as a react, and Elsik is a passenger because he had Dasan as the pilot, uh, and then never moved them after he lost Dasan. See if Bill sees that message or not. You may not react to or from here is the light side text, but that's not it. No, nope, I guess you didn't see the message. So that actually works out fairly poorly for Baba Duke, but not having his guys in the right spot. One of those little things that doesn't always happen in real life games because you're just kind of moving cards and whatnot around, but Jemp makes you specifically announce where people are and in which seats and things like that, and is a little more rigid with that. So it's also a lot harder to fix. And now that Ozla has been killed and no longer at that site, guys are not power plus one. Or forfeit plus one. So Hera's getting two destiny now. This should be a good way to clear... You know, I'm still probably not going to clear both because Elsic still forfeits for five. You got five and three from the bike would be eight. Eh, maybe with two destiny. Uh, that's not a good start. Jedi Lev? Can't even redraw that with Hera because there's only one guy there. Oof. Five total. He's just going to get Elsick. And it's still going to be... Uh... Jan is still sitting there in front of him. With a six. That'll get rid of Hera. All right, they figured it out. Woo Do you have to buy packs digitally to play like that? No, all the cards are free online on the Jump website. 
gem.starwarscg.org. Puts Imperial Command in hand to exchange and get prepared defenses. Oh, I guess he was just trying to exchange any card to get an Imperial back, uh, not realizing they have to swap uh, specific cards. Oh, then he played the prepared defenses to make it a 7. Okay. So he kills Ray and leaves Hera. Crazy stuff going on. Depending on where you live. Yeah, there's real life games all over the place. We still have major tournaments uh, three or four times a year. Um, there's the World Championships are next week in Europe. Um, they're in Europe every four years. So that way they don't have to travel as uh, you know to get a World Championship. Uh, we just had a big tournament in Minnesota. There's a big one in the Northeast in New Jersey every year. And uh, currently our other major event is in the Seattle area. And uh, we're hoping to have something in the Atlanta, possibly or DC area in 2020 for our major tournaments. But there's always local events. There's league events uh, in a lot of different spots of the country. And uh, all stuff all over. So definitely check out the website that uh, Seder was kind enough to post in the chat. And you can find out all kinds of more information. We just finished uh, redoing the whole website got a whole brand new facelift on the front page and uh, as a result some other stuff got uh, updated and tweaked as well <laughs> and now Bill is sharing that uh, in the chat that uh, why he couldn't react and move so they don't think it was a game bug so they don't report a game link or anything like that because um, Jimp does occasionally have some bugs we do know that it's not perfect um, it's a computer program But uh, at least they've solved that mystery now, and uh, they'll be sure to be more cognizant of what's going on in the future. Active judging. There it was, folks. Active judging. We just active judged a game and uh, <laughs> explained the game situation, the game state. Uh, I believe active judging will also be part of the World Championships for the, uh, the top eight again. With that many uh, qualified players available in the room, uh, we should certainly uh, have some people available to do some active judging on Sunday and uh, make sure that the games go uh, the way they're supposed to and uh, not have any uh, unfortunate mistakes or unseen errors or seen errors uh, go uh, unfixed. You're in Colorado. Well, what a coincidence. One of our other streamers is in Colorado. Uh, not too far from the Denver area. So there you go. Okay, so if you're still watching, you might have a new Colorado guy for your league events. There's actually a forum about them meeting up for random play testing. I just saw that. Uh, it's in the tournaments thread here on the forums. Bam. Uh, Colorado play test meetup. They're trying to figure out a date and time to play at the Longmont shop in Longmont, Colorado. Looks like they tried to meet up last weekend and uh, played and had a few fun games. But that's the area of Colorado that they're in. And if you go to the forums, if you sign up at StarWarsCCG.org, create an account, once you have an account, here's what the home page looks like. We'll get back to the game in a second. Uh, you get the home page, you create an account, you click that button up there, bam, forum. It's going to take me to the new forums, I know. Which I'm still not using because I don't, uh, haven't adapted to the banner yet. And then you go down to this little tournament section. Uh, there's also a, I don't know if Colorado has their own league. Maybe they should start one for 2020. There seems to be enough guys there that they could run some monthly events. 
get some extra foils, which I know all you guys love having the foil slips. Uh, we'll also be working on that for the new marketing term, getting the 2020 league kits available. Dirk. Um, yeah, but that's where you got all that stuff. So what do we got going on here? Oh, we got a Mara Jade beatdown on Captain Hera. Swing, hit, bam, boom. From Basil. Does the pre-built side, uh, does the cat schedule side have, yes. Yes, it does. When you, uh, at least he draws a six for Destiny. That's pretty solid. Mara Jade dies. The objective flips back. Kind of smart. Like, if you're Mara Jade's a better character to have than these two guys, but keeping him on the seven side actually means that he's not free to battle. It makes him cost four to battle here, so it kind of limits him a little more to what he can do. Uh, yes, but the the jump here, in addition to decks that you create, there are a bunch of pre-built sample decks. Um, Hunt Down Dueling, the 96 World Championship decks, 98, EBO, you know, some, some more current stuff, some more uh, older classic stuff that have, you know, the Death Star 2 pre-constructed starter decks and stuff are kind of plugged in here. So, you get a look at a few of my deck lists and deck titles while I'm looking at that. Shuttle moves over. Thrawn moves over to the binder. See if the binder then moves back. Oh, nope, he's just shuttling and Thrawn down. So he ship docked to move him over and then shuttled him down. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's also sealed leagues and things you can join too. I think the current one is a Endor Death Star 2. Uh, you can't join leagues your first week. Because you don't have any gold, you need five gold to join a league, and you don't get you get gold every Monday. Uh, that's your allowance. You get five gold every Monday as your allowance. So it stops people from joining sealed leagues and creating fake accounts to just keep drafting ridiculous amounts of time until they get all the good cards that they want uh, for the sealed leagues. All right. So Taco's starting to fall behind a little bit. Now he's getting threatened with a little bit more damage. Binder moves back over as well. He's going to get hit with... He's getting hit right now with three a turn. But he doesn't have to pay for any of it. with the barrier grabbed with just that one force. That's not going to be enough. Now, Binder does not draw by itself. Nope, just ability two, and you can't. Your other ships can move two here as they react, so he can react the Emperor over. I wonder if Bill remembered that. Seems to be a lot of reacting going on in, uh, in, in Baba Duke's deck here. Yep. Does he have anything to cancel or react? Gold leader and gold one prevents reacts. That's another uh, huge advantage of that card. There's a dark time to subtract one from the destiny. We got here. We got Solo and Radis. And that's a four, five, six, seven. That's going to clear Solo off the ship. And Binder also makes you spend extra force to move away, right? To move from here requires plus one force. And he gets a second destiny. Uh, that's going to clear both guys. <laughs> uh, it's actually 11 attrition. That's going to clear... Yeah, clear both guys. Is 
yep, forgot about the React. So there goes Radis. There goes Solo. Tandiv can run away by itself to Raltier for a turn. Hope he doesn't have any more ships left. He only has two cards in hand. Probably doesn't have a, a ship and a guy or anything like that to come down on it. to do with Jin Urso. Move her to the guy that's two less power. But partially immune to attrition. And with two cards in hand, he's going to probably try and retrieve something a little bit stronger this time. Maybe get Lando back or... He goes for Lando. Destiny 5, good power, adds a battle destiny. Kind of everything you need to have right now. And see if uh, if Vinny's got something in one of those two cards in hand that he does not mind parting with. He had a command left, so Lando's going to go out of play. Got Life Force counts again, 24 and 4, 28 for Bill, 19 currently for Babadook. And he's going to lose three cards here in the, between these three drains. And again, he can just move Binder back over. Does Radis? Oh, it probably wasn't. I was going to say, he didn't pull anything with Radis either. Before losing him, he could have gotten the Corvette out. So he doesn't have another ship to possibly deploy. Still doesn't have enough ability to draw Destiny, but... He's getting 17 force. He does still have the the walkling available to him. If he can find the right time to retrieve that, and then he could end up with that card on top of his deck. Like if he can draw one or two destiny and then pay one and retrieve one, and then that card would end up within striking distance of him to take it into hand. So presumably if Jin dies... And then he pays one to retrieve Jin. She would go on top of the Destiny plus the one he paid. And then maybe he could activate close enough to it and then get two cards and get her back into hand and then like redeploy her somewhere else. But no battle this turn. Jen is not going to want to clear out Jin. Just going to be content to just shuffle and move and reload his hand. a huge time difference too um, between these two players. I know Baba Duke. There's a lot more actions going on with his deck in terms of what uh, he's got going on. He saw the sense earlier, so now it's a good time to pull the Do or Do Not Shield. Plus, just playing a card that he can cycle back. Taco Bell's barely used any of his 60-minute uh, timer. 
and Babadook has used over half of his. Maybe that's also why this game feels like it's been taking so long. Because we haven't really seen Bill do very much, but... He's got four cards stacked. All he needs now is uh, Anakin Skywalker and Vader, and he can turn him and uh, win the game. <laughs> so he's got three battlegrounds now, so he can basically peek at any of the cards other than the Hear Me Baby that he just put back. Take the most useful one or lowest destiny one out of them, and then shuffle the remaining three cards. And then he presumably he would know what all three of these destiny are. So if he's dropping, say, Obi with lightsaber or something, he knows what he's going to swing and possibly draw for destiny to hit and clear. Uh, we assume the Gick is still in hand, so again, he's not really going to be able to get any overflow anytime soon. And he did already use his grabber on the barrier, so that's going to leave him the option to keep exchanging for the Gick to get it back over and over. is also going to need to find himself a pilot for his Tantive. That's another good card. Land of Debris and Sacrifice. That's a good combo card. I like this one a lot. We don't see it so much used for the movement text, but Canceling a react is certainly helpful, and then this just, you know, being able to prevent permanent weapons from making guys forfeit zero. That's always a nice touch. Uh, especially like the light side version, which also pr protects them against Dr. E. Hey look, it's EPB Obi. And it's a profundity. Deploying for super cheap, because it's to your opponent's system. Still don't want to battle, though, because of the react, but uh, Obi will battle. He'll hit Tarkin and at least clear him off one more site, and then Jin will have a place to go move away back to and hide. He could walk back the Obi as well, and then set it up with the... He will bring balance. Alright, so he drew... The, he hits him, and... He, well, the Hear Me Baby was one of the two cards. We don't know what this third destiny is. Uh, Bill does, because he saw all three. Oh, he's just going to sorry about the mess him. And just take Tarkin off the board altogether. It's a good move. Keeps Obi in play. Gives him control of the site. And then whether he wants to move... He could say he could battle with Jin. I don't know that he needs to. He's going to move the ships away. In front of the Emperor shuttle over there. And just rely on the huge power difference. Retrieve a card. So he spent two to deploy Profundity here, thought better of it. Uh, profundity would have only cost him, cost him two extra force to move Profundity over. If he was going to run away, uh, he would have deployed Profundity here and then slid Tandiv. Um, so either he changed his mind uh, about the situation uh, or opted to deploy him here just to see if his opponent maybe might hold any type of like pull out a barrier or hold any type of card here that then kind of bluff a little bit that would then let Obi get through on Tarkin. Because if he's worried about this battle and then maybe he spends some of this force to play the barrier and he might be holding on to um, to protect the binder even though the ship can react over but still. 
you don't know what's coming on top of it. So you want to barrier the ship because you don't know how many pilots or whatever he might be adding. But it didn't look like he had anything. It's kind of like a tester card, you know. He drops the profundity as like a little tester to see what uh, response Baba Duke has. And then when he doesn't do anything, then he feels a little more confident that maybe Obi will get through. Hey, there you go, Queso. Meet the new guy. Just rediscovered this game after many years. Thanks to our Twitch stream. I, I'm assuming. So Life Force counts right now. We got 20 to 17. But Bill has stretched the game out a little bit more for himself. Um, he's given himself a drain of here that's going to be tough to contend with. He's reasonably likely to only possibly lose one of these ships. I'll probably lose both because he Janus a card. Um, and then he's got this drain of, of two over here as well. If he doesn't have to pay for them, that would be stellar for him. Uh, but we are verifying his reserve deck right now, and Papa Duke doesn't seem too happy with it. So either these two cards are duds, Well, that'll get him to two battle destiny now. That's right. right. I knew he needed something, whether it was a ship or uh, a pilot. He would have something. And with him adding two, because he's flipped, he basically only needs to draw like a three. There's a five. That'll clear both. Unless this other one is a zero, which I can't imagine it would be at this point. Five and a six. That's definitely going to clear both. That's probably... And, uh, yeah, that's, he's even going to win the battle, so he won't even have to stack a card. Well... Now we'll see whether he's going to keep Marriage 8. Nah, yeah, he'll lose Marriage 8. I was going to say, these are the options for just to lose the Emperor and keep Marriage 8 in the shuttle, but knowing that you've just cleared two ships from your opponent pretty uh, succinctly there, it makes you start to wonder, does he have a third ship? What else could he possibly have left? Uh, he, he, he lost a Corellian Corvette earlier, so he actually technically would be looking at a fourth ship which seems unlikely for a light side main deck. Um, whether it's, you know, uh, if they are playing a third, you know, you, typically you see in these types of decks it's Tan of Profundity uh, or possibly Rogue One being a third ship because Radis can pull it. Uh, looks like Bill opted earlier for the Corvette as opposed to the Rogue One. But, uh, yeah, usually you want, if you're going to play that third ship, usually it's, it's something like that. Occasionally there's people running the Falcon as a third ship, but that's not as, as common in, any longer. Um, and here's what we're going to do, what we talked about earlier, where he's going to walkling back a card, pay one to put it, and then he can activate 15, and that'll get him right to a spot where he can then deploy the ship again. He can take the ship into hand with his peak here. But of course, knowing that your opponent's sitting on a, a six and a five, he's going to retrieve a ship into hand with the effective repairs combo, Starship Levitation. Use three force, retrieve an effect or a non-maintenance starship. So he spends three plus one for secret plans being four. He retrieves a ship. He 
then peeks at a card, he'll take the other one right back into hand. Tanav will cost him four to put down here. Uh, Profundity will go down for two more. That'll be six. That means he can at least pay to drain here for two as well. And uh, make Baba Duke peel off two cards. And then they'll go to here to this system where Binder's not going to battle them. And that'll give him another turn to kind of regroup, maybe find one more character, make him shuffle stuff around. Don't forget to plug Hollow Theater on Sunday with me and Dan Tortolillion and special guest Silver Glen. I think you got that too. I think, uh, yeah, five A's and three O's. Yeah, you got that right. It's Wednesday, yes. Star Wars CCG Hollow Theater, our other weekly broadcast show hosted by Queso and Dan. Uh, Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so about a half hour from now. They are in uh, episode three. And I will remember, after this uh, stream is over, I will remember to update your uh, your show heading. Um, oh, he is deploying in front of the Emperor. Blocking the drain at the battleground. Interesting. Yeah, I would have thought he would have deployed here. Make the battleground with Tantiv anyway. Let him have his drain of one. And uh, don't battle the binder. And the binder's not going to battle, you know, could battle you, but you're not overly concerned about that. It's only one destiny. You're more concerned about him having any other character to put down here as a pilot and get a second destiny. And then clear both ships again. And he is going to force the retrieval. He's going to pay to get Leia back. I think Baba Duke's got a stack of card here to keep him from getting Leia. Because you don't want to get Leia, because Leia retrieves when she battles, which gets him more characters. And then he'll like my father a card back. Yep. This week, interview with Justin Branch, who uh, I believe you guys talked to once before. Or maybe that was Robbie who interviewed him. But either way, uh, he was a previous Hollow Theater guest. Uh, so nice to get him back on the, sh uh, the, the show. Not a lot of people uh, outside the Europe region, the UK region, uh, have met Justin. So seeing him uh, interviewed would be a great addition to the game again. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get that updated for you. That way you uh, don't need to text me or tweet me or whatever you know, for a Twitch code. Hopefully you guys have that resolved and you can stream directly to uh, the PC site. If you need a stream key or something, we can get you that too. So you or Dan can just stream right to it uh, without having to log in. So we're at 13 cards left for Baba Duke. 15, 17, he's gonna lose one more. So I'll be down to 16, so 16, 13. The gap has narrowed. I start going down to block a drain. Not going to lie. I think I would have put Iceheart over here and started draining for three. That's just me. He's got two cards left in hand. You've got two battlegrounds, three battlegrounds. So you're not worried about Coward. I had to put Iceheart here. That's just a... Uh, I think that pulls you ahead. If you put Ice Heart there and you start draining for three, I think that pulls you ahead. Because now suddenly you're doing three, four, five points of damage a turn to their two. 
three. If you have the Gick in hand, you don't worry about that. You just slide Janus over. If you really want to block that drain of one, but I don't think you need to for at least a turn. You can pick up your own damage. And then if you can clear this stuff out and put him back to having to pay to drain, that extra drain of three is going to add up pretty quick and get him to the point where he can't afford to start paying for both and moving people around and stuff. It was you and Justin about a year ago. Okay. Yeah, I knew you guys had uh, had, done, had him as an interview for uh, the show. I just didn't remember who was involved then. That must have been when you were flying solo. Sans co-host. peek at a card. If he can find a pilot character, he's going to be in a lot better shape in this space situation. But I still think he's otherwise he's just shuffling the ships over to Raltier. Tonight's show has gone on a lot longer than I expected to. Thank you guys for sticking with the show. The, uh, nine or ten of you who are still around. Uh, certainly watching an interesting game here that's going to be coming to its conclusion in the next two turns or so. If he's got that em extra Emperor tracked around, this could be pretty bad because that could be, he could be drawing nine total here. And that would clear both characters out. But he will win the battle. Well, I should say he's likely to win the battle in this situation here. And that would get him to stack another card, which just takes it's one more point of damage. It's like every time I play Hitco, like I want to play Draw Their Fire, so all these battles you're initiating and winning, it's like a two force swing but it doesn't quite fit it can fit it doesn't quite naturally fit i don't know and half the time they battle you because like luke's sitting over there the whole game you know doing his thing and then they just start time they just start coming to battle you and then it ends up biting you in the butt when now they're retrieving and causing you force loss It's a tie. But it's only a seven. So Obi dies and Jin gets to stay. And he will exchange a card. He swapped the dominations. I guess there was nothing else that he could exchange. So he had a domination in his hand that he exchanged to get the domination out of his lost pile. I guess he was looking for something different. I don't know what else he could be exchanging for, what other effects he might have wanted. And the ships will shuffle over. He'll retrieve a card. Yeah, Bill's just going to kind of grind this out. This drain of two is just going to slowly, went down to four, five, six, nine... And then he's, if he's going to retrieve a card, he'll get himself longer. If he's going to opponent's going to stack one, that's just going to bleed him out a little faster. You hope to have a co-host for more than a month at a, this time. That would be great. I'm sure, uh, you know, Dan can learn from your expert uh, streaming abilities and uh, hosting abilities. And the two of you guys can, can carry your show on for months and uh, continue to provide great content for the players committee and the star wars ccg community yep 
He stacks a card to keep him from getting Hera back. Yeah, Thrawn's already on the table anyway, so. But it is another card, so now he's down to eight. So in four turns, Luke will have drained him out. And he draws a bunch of cards, which are probably a bunch of red cards at this point, but hey, you never know. He's lost any other ships. He lost Mara's ship. But Duke does still have this retrieval available too. He'll give his opponent back a card, but if he gets to a point where he just needs one more force to live one more turn to then drain his opponent for another series of drains, that one retrieval could be the difference. There's been a number of games I've played over the years where I've either won a game by one force or lost a game by one force because of something special planned for them retrieving a ship like at this late stage of the game. How about my boy Trevor Simeon? Excited to watch him. Well, first off, I don't have ESPN, so I won't be watching the game tonight, which is kind of sad. I'll have to find some type of alternative stream or something for it. Uh, it's actually going on now. Am I excited about... Your, your football guy? No, I'm not excited about having your Denver quarterback. I'm barely excited about having your former Denver coach. So, But we don't want to get too far off topic here. So we got drains of one and one. Bill's down to 15 total cards now. So it's so 15 to eight. So he's got to... Uh, and he's currently losing two a turn. Doesn't look like obviously Janice is going to battle Jin to get rid of her this turn. So then it's going to come down to what other characters may Bill have found with that last draw. Is there anything he's got left? Is it just Jedi Luke's at this point in Destiny 5 interrupts? Is there a Jedi Lev still floating around in here that he can retrieve a guy back with and catch somebody off guard? just spend in force at this point. He's going to shuffle some stuff around. And Bill's just going to keep pulling shields and whatnot just to keep using cards and putting cards back so he has force available to himself. Binder moves over. We'll see if the shuttle move back. Yep. Looks like Vinny thought better about whatever he was going to do. It's going to be a pretty narrow victory, but Bill is going to pull this out. The other thing that would uh, is always a little bit frustrating is this. 13 minutes left out of a 60-minute timer versus 43 minutes left out of a 60-minute timer. Your opponent has used 30 extra minutes of game actions and just general decision-making time. I know not everybody plays as fast, um, or certainly decks certainly don't always play as fast, but... Uh, when you start to see these numbers get this far apart, it's you know it can be a little frustrating to, to play, a little frustrating to watch, but it can also be a little frustrating to play against that. Um, you know, maybe it's a bad connection. 
it has an old laptop or a laggy computer and just each individual game action you know is, is stretched out another five seconds and it just kind of cumulatively adds up throughout the course of the game um, but usually you know it's some combination of stuff that goes on with that but uh, certainly haven't seen him taking an abundance of time you know thinking about a lot of individual actions where he's just sitting there for three or four minutes or verifying his reserve deck and thinking about the cards that are in there so it's probably just a slower connection that he's on you know he's playing on a device an older device on uh, a weaker Wi-Fi signal or something like that where there's just an inherent lag right row he's gonna battle in both spots and clear both dudes Going, swinging for the fences. Padme will take out. As long as he draws higher than three, because they can jump off the bike. Oh, no! Wah, 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 wah. doesn't even have to lose it because when piloted vehicle and scouts aboard are immune to attrition less than four. There's no scout aboard. Aha. So he can still lose the bike and Thrawn can jump off. And that will keep him from flipping. Oh, but apparently he doesn't know that and he lost Thrawn. Now Jin just runs away. See ya. Jin moves away, flips back, makes him drop a card from hand. And then he can use that last force to retrieve a card. He's going to split up his ships. Well, I guess we can conclude that the one card left in Bill's hand may be the Hujix. Not necessarily that he would need it. You know, Tan of Cover is 13. This is 5, and he's not adding anymore because he's not flipped. But he still gets 2 Destiny, assuming he draws 2 4s. 8 and 5 would be 13, right? That covers. So... Thank you for doing these game discussions. Thank you for watching these game discussions. It's like Stan Lee used to say, you keep reading them, I'll keep writing them. So it's one of my favorite things each week, getting to watch different games. Uh, usually sometimes we watch game link uh, reviews. And then we can control the speed a little bit more. But uh, this happened to be an interesting live game. As soon as I saw Sleens, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm, uh, I'm, we're gonna be watching this one for a while. Yep, he's got. Oh, he only had one four. He only had one destiny available. It's still enough to clear it. But he doesn't risk any. He doesn't get any overflow possibility. Now he's got to flip flop his ships again. Or just move the shuttle. And then we'll see if Janice also moves over or not. But I think it's safe to say Bill's got this game at this point. Because next turn he's going to do three damage without. Um, and Vinny's only got six cards left, so. He's just going to do three damage, two here, one here. He's going to retrieve another card. And he's basically taking no damage back. He'll move this guy away. He'll take one here, which is the card he's going to retrieve. Um, and then he'll drain for three again the next turn and, and win this game. Um, so I'm actually going to end the stream here because uh, it's a little later than I like to go and a little longer. So thank you guys very much for watching. 
Be sure to tune in Wednesday night uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so right about now. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, Star Wars SWCCG Hollow Theater with Jerry Queso Sauce Hein and uh, Dan Tartaglioni. Tartaglione. Uh, Dan doesn't have a really nickname. Tartag. Tartag1. Uh, we'll be talking about some more Star Wars stuff and interviewing top European player Justin Branch, who could potentially be the team captain of, uh, of Team Europe for the Outrider Cup. I don't know if that was part of your interview, but uh, probably not. But, uh, yeah, interested to see what Justin has to say leading up to the World Championships and where his, uh, his thoughts are on the current meta. Um, and then uh, I'll be back every, you know, my usual time next Monday. And uh, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys have a, a great rest of your week. And uh, we'll uh, take care of you soon. Talk to you soon. Take care.